it's finally here. The IQ Elite LCD Upgrade Kit from Corsair. Let's get it installed. One thing that I would recommend you do before installing is to open up your IQ software. Go to the settings at the top corner, click updates and make sure your IQ software is the latest version. If not, click the button here and it should download automatically and install for you. I would also recommend as well that you check that your Elite Capelix firmware is up to date too. Same again, just press the button and let it do its thing. Now we'll have a look to see what comes inside the box. Just grab an knife here and I'll get this opened. So we have the screen itself with the cables attached at the bottom. One of those cables is a cable that connects straight to the top of the Commander Core unit that comes with the all-in-one cooler itself. We also have a USB cable. And there's also a cable to connect, uh, connect to the motherboard for the, the pump speed. We also have a USB splitter in case we don't have a spare USB header on the motherboard. It's quite handy. We have a little Allen key as well for removing the existing LED panel on the top of the pump. And we also have some silver screws that the, the new screen can magnetically attach to and I'll show how those go in soon. And inside we have safety and warranty information and uh, as always that will go straight in the bin. The next thing to do is remove the four allen screws that holds the LED unit onto the top of the pump. One, two, three, and four. So the top plate comes off, that's the plate that's interchangeable, you can change it out with a white one. And then the actual LED unit itself just basically pulls off. If you turn it around, you'll see uh, the little plug that plugs into the top of the pump. And then it's just a case of taking off the the connection to the motherboard for the pump speed. So now I'll turn the case around um, and I'll remove the, the rear panel, which gives me access to the Commander Core unit that came with the all-in-one cooler itself. From the bottom of this, the USB, the USB cable comes out um, and joins into the motherboard and up the top is the connection from the, the pump itself. So I'll disconnect that. We'll take this other panel off at the side because all the cables are in behind there. And I'll grab a pair of snips as well because uh, they're all cable tied together. And then that'll allow me to pull the LED unit out and remove it all together. So there we go, it's all light now. Just the cable that goes into the top of the commander core unit and the cable that plugs into the motherboard for the pump speed that's removed. That's that's out of the way. Next off we'll add in the four little screws that came in the bag with the LCD um, screen. I just need to screw these in thumb tight. I don't need to overdo it with a screw, screwdriver or anything. So we've got one, two, three, and finally, the fourth one. So I ran into a little issue with this when I was first trying to install it. Um, the housing itself has got a cut out, um, which accommodates the, the, the hoses coming from the side. Um, you'll notice, sorry, this is the four magnets that this uh, the screen attaches to. But this cut out from the side is for the hoses. But because of the, the bracket for this chipset, um, the AM4 bracket, it doesn't actually allow for that housing to sit on properly. So what you need to do is remove this housing. There's four little screws here that you can take off and that allows you to remove the housing and the screen then attaches no problem without any issues with it fouling. What to look out for guys. Then it's just a case of pushing the cables back up through the hole where the, the previous cables came from. Just make sure they're fed up out of the way. Push the screen on to the top of the pump, make sure the little connectors in properly and the magnets are holding it in place. And then it's just a case of attaching the pump speed cable um, to the header on the motherboard. Next thing we can do is add in a USB splitter cable. Um, I don't actually need this because I do have a spare 
header on the motherboard, but um, it, it keeps it a little bit tidier looking uh, when you're looking inside the case. You can only see the one cable coming in. So I'll get that added. Next, we can go to the back of the case and we can put the connector into the top of the commander core unit. Make sure the little white marks line up and it's seated properly. Avoid the bending any pins. And then we also have the USB cable, which we plug into the splitter. Make sure that the blanks are married up. Don't want to bend any pins here. And then the existing cable coming from the commander core unit, which was already there, we just put that into the other side of the splitter as well. Simples. Now we've put all the panels back on, hiding all the, the cables. Great feature about this case, it just uh, just looks so nice, not being able to see all that mess. Shot over the bottom panel, hides even more of the cables. Bonus. Just get the side doors and put them back on. And then I think that's just, uh, just about us ready and good to go. All done, pretty simple install. So now that we have the LCD screen installed, we can now go into the IQ software and play about with the customization and get it looking the way you want. So we've got up here, we can click on this. It brings us into this window and you'll see all the different options of things on the left hand side here that you can change. As you can see, I've already got the fans and stuff set up to a colour scheme that I use. But um, the first thing that you can change is the ring that actually goes around the screen itself. Um, mine's is currently set to, to match the theme with the fans and the, the rest of the, the courses stuff I have inside my case. Um, there's the fans I was mentioning and the, the hardware lighting. Um, like basically how the lights look is uh, if IQ is not running. Um, but the ring, the ring's the main thing we are focusing on here. That's it's the only thing that's part of the the Capelix upgrade kit. So I think this. Uh, this comes with 25 LEDs, I'm pretty sure I counted 25, and those can be individually programmed to anything you want. I'm currently using three different colours, but you could have every single one of these a different colour as you please, or all sorts of different lighting effects, have it spinning around, moving, whatever you like, but um, I quite like it just to, to stay static. But yeah, thought I'd quickly show you that. Um, screen setup, that's probably the most important part of this. Um, click on this. So on the, the left here, you can see all the different screen types. That's all the different presets of what's actually shown on the screen. So we've got a concentric kind of pattern. Um, and for each of these patterns as well, you, there's actually colors that you can go in and change to suit yourself, to totally match your, your color theme, which is great. Um, and under each of these as well, there's also the sensors that you can choose between. So you can choose between the temperature of your your memory, the temperature of your CPU, um, motherboard fan speeds, um, all sorts of stuff, all the different normal sensor things that you'd expect, your, your fan speeds, your your pump speed, uh, GPU temperature as well. Um, so it's great for various information that it can show, but um, I'll go back to this and show you the presets. So we've got a single bar type preset. A fade fill, again you can change the colours of this to, to suit colours for your theme. Temperatures as well, you can set all the different levels for that as well. Monitor, I'll leave the imaging GIF one to last because that's probably the most fun. We've got aperture which is a quite quite a cool spacey trippy kind of uh, animation on the screen, I quite like that one. Um, dynamic bar, that just builds up as the temperature goes up. Pattern fill, as expected, the pattern just starts building up as the temperature goes up. Dual bar, which is quite a good one, showing you two different temperatures. You can set one for maybe your CPU and one for your GPU as well, which uh, we go to CPU and then we can change that one to GPU and give you the two different temperatures of how it's running at the moment. Or you can turn it off altogether if you want and just have the, the LED ring around the, the, the screen. Turbo, which is a Quite a cool one, looks like your fans. Or else just a good old basic clock, which is nice as well. So everything is very, very customizable. All the colors and everything are customizable. Um, but the main one that I really like, yeah, and I think that's why I bought it for, was for the the option to use your own image or your own GIF file. So it comes already with some, some preloaded pictures. You can upload pictures as you please. 
just a case of dragging it into position and resizing it so that it fits in the screen. It's pretty simple. You can do that. Or you can get GIFs. Now, GIFs are the, the most fun ones, I think. Um, it comes with one preset one, which you can see in the screen at the moment. But you can download ones to suit yourself, some, some real fun ones. Um, but it's just a case of getting one that actually fits in the screen. But you could have a real laugh with this. Um, and one that I seen, which I thought was quite fun, was this one. It's just not quite the right size, but I'll, I'll have a look about it until I find something. So that's that. That's uh, the things you can change in the screen, which, to be honest, I think that's basically what most people would buy this for. Um, hardware screen is what shows on the screen when IQ is off. So I currently have mine set at the, the coolant temperature inside the, the cooler itself. Cooling, there's no point in going across that because you've already got the Capellix cooler in the system, so you know how that works with the fans and everything. Um, device settings, this, this is where you can update the firmware um, for the screen itself and the pump. Um, again, change your brightness if you want to change your brightness of the LEDs around the ring or the brightness of the LED screen itself, LCD screen, sorry. Um, Case colour, that's an interesting one. Mine's is black, I'm not actually sure if you can get this in white or if you plan to bring it in white, but even if, even if it, uh, I'm not quite sure what that would do to be honest with you, why that matters, but anyway, the option's there for some reason. And the LCD frame rate, obviously the higher the frame rate the better. You lower that down it starts juddering. And I think that's about that covered. There you go guys, I uh, really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps when it comes to you installing yours. As always, if you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe, and if not, leave a dislike, and any comments as well, so, um, really appreciate those, and they always go towards helping future videos. Thanks again guys, see you soon.